Welcome to the Steam Smart Podcast, the podcast that's all about Steam, the blockchain-based social media platform that's taking over the world. I'm here with Steven Polsky at Sneaky Squirrel. Hey guys, today should be a very exciting episode. And I'm George Donnelly at George Donnelly. Today our topic is how to make awesome content. And we're here with Leah Stevens at Stella Bell. An all-around fascinating person, professional writer, innovative content creator, and holder of the highest reputation on How are you today, Leah? Uh, pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing awesome. It's a wonderful day. So, uh, our first topic of the day is, what is awesome content? What, what Leah, would you say constitutes awesome content, at least on Steemit? All right. So, there's a couple of components. And when I look at a piece, I look at, first of all, formatting, kind of the basic stuff. Um, a lot of people don't spend a lot of time formatting their posts, meaning making some of the text bold and kind of zeroing in on, hey, what is the most dramatic aspect of, let's say, this paragraph? So that's the first thing is formatting, looking at it um, from the point of view of an audience, not so much you as a writer, um, but just, hey, how appealing is this going to be? with my uh, bolded text and also the photo choices, those two things can make or break something. I know that I will not read through something that doesn't have photos. I'm really, I'm like a very visual person. So I just don't like the regular text. If I want to get text, I'll just read a book. Say in a picture so, books then. Yeah. And so basically anyone that's starting out new you know content the topic that's another thing but the main thing is formatting and photographs and you know of course the biggest part of this is the content um today i spent like two hours going through all the new stuff on steam it and just kind of trying to find something interesting mm -hmm. that was dense i found a couple things but for the most part what i'm seeing is just um really short posts so basically my advice to everyone is just go for it like write like it's your last day on earth <laughs> like what do you have to say what have you learned because basically what if you've gone through some amazing transformation or even something like a day that you, you spent time thinking through something, I bet someone else out there has as well. Uh, but it is really tricky to figure out, hey, what's going to be popular? Because really not all great posts become popular, uh, popular posts. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mystery involved in what makes something popular. It's like this magical thing. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, on the say, topic, yeah, no, I was just saying on the topic of of formatting. Yeah, that that's a really important uh, point. And you know, when I tell some new people, I say, "Well, you got to use Markdown." And then they're kind of like, "Oh my God, what is Markdown? I have to learn something new." And I'm like, no, 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 it's, a, it's easier. It's way easier than HTML. It's so simple. You know, two hash marks in front of a word to make it like a, an H2 level title, you know? Uh, two asterisks on either side of a word to bold it, you know? And links, you just enclose your, your link uh, text in uh, brackets and then next to it without a space, the actual link inside prints, you know, super easy. And uh, embedding pictures are super easy too. You know, you just upload them to steamimg.com uh, and they give you the embed code. Embedding YouTube videos, you just put the link to the video in, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's good to start off with just using, like you said, just three tools, simple. The hash marks in front of, and just start real simple, like learn one new tool and don't 
bog, get bogged down with trying to learn everything about Markdown. Because as you, you know, as you learn it, then you can add a few things more. Um, but as far as what to write about, that's the million dollar question. And we see every day, like, of course, that billboard, the billboard one, that yeah. got a few, the whales love that because that's exposure. Right. And the thing is, I, I think, <laughs> I, I've been talking about with the, the guys behind that in Steam Drive, and in the Steam Drive channel on Steamit.chat. And I, I respect their commitment and their, you know, their thinking outside the box and um, their follow through. But at the same time, I've been trying, you know, I've been kind of on a crossing the chasm kick. I don't know. Are you familiar with that book, uh, Leah? Uh, no. Uh -uh. So it's what basically, it's a book from several years ago about how uh, new technologies spread throughout the population. Mm. Basically, uh, there's a, when you have a new technology, the first people to pick it up are like the, the bleeding edge early adopter type. That would be me. we are in the 2.5%. Oh, uh, like zero yeah, point yeah, two five. Statistically, yeah. it's two point five according to the actual numbers. The next group is like twelve point five or uh, thirteen point five, and then after that, it's like an eighteen percent uh, group. Right. Uh, that's the early mainstream. Which uh, basically, that could be a whole nother. I, I'm really curious about um, the people that followed me in from day one. There was a couple people of my uh, friends, but. Basically, I was the first one to find Steemit out of a big group of people that are in this other um, Facebook group. But what is crazy to me is that I like immediately got on it. I never left the rabbit hole. I found it do through doing research. But here's the craziest part. I am a share of information. Like, that's a messenger. I'm essentially, I view myself as an explorer, number one and a messenger too. But the thing is that not everyone that read my posts about what was going on in Steam It, they mm -hmm. didn't have the same gung-ho, let's go for it and just see what happens. They didn't have the experimental mindset. Mm -hmm. And so really, I think what defines a lot of the people, well, except for the people that were the miners and all the people that followed Dan Larimer from BitShares into it, those are the true inner core group. And then there's like the oddball, like um, experimentalists that just ran into it and then followed immediately. Like those people are certain types of personalities. They're like mm -hmm. explorers, unafraid of new technology and just like wanting something better. George and I, are both I try everything out. Like, I try every new thing that comes out. I try it immediately before anyone else does, it seems like, because I'm in the constant search for improvement and new things to enha enhance life. Mm. Really. But the thing, the thing with uh, the Steam Drive billboard is that uh, the Crossing the Chasm book says there are certain types of people who are going to adopt early. And then there's a big uh, <laughs> chasm, essentially, before you get to the next groups who are going to adopt it. And right. this chasm is where so many new technologies fail because they, although new adopters are into it, they can't get to the next group. And that's the problem with the Steam Drive billboard. They are trying to jump ahead to the point where they want to attract uh, regular people, you know, who are like want to make an extra five bucks, you know, out of the back of their pickup truck or something. And, uh, <laughs> that makes no sense. It's a huge spend of money. It's a huge investment of time. Those people are not going to come aboard until we get more uh, people who are visionary leaders and technology enthusiasts. Because those well, the thing is, on, those are the next people on the crossing the chasm uh, thing. And all these yeah, people I would have to interject trucks. one oh, thing just, here. I'll, I'll let you say something. In a <laughs> <laughs> Those regular people driving their pickup trucks, they're going to be like, what the heck is this? And they're going to go to their visionary leader or their technology enthusiast, the guy who fixes their computer or whatnot. And if he, if he has nothing good to say about it, they're not going to adopt it, you know? So anyway, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, there? I would have to admit that your theory is not provable. 
because it's a theory based on pre-events. So my uh, suggestion, like, I just say the more experiments that are out there, the better it is. Because basically through experimentation, you learn the truth and reality. You don't learn by prejudging an event. So I would say, I would say, you know what? Just get as many things out there. What? The thing is, we have the benefit of all this research that went into this book. Crossing the chasm is basically accepted knowledge for the most part within the tech world. So it's kind of like, you know, we have a, um, you know, we found a new kind of fish and we're trying to sell it to, uh, you know, uh, vegans, you know. Right. <laughs> you mentioned yeah. fish. Stella. I'm a strict experimentalist. So basically, I just test everything out throw crap on the fridge and whatever sticks i go with it i'm a purist with experimentation stella do you do you know your personality type on myers-briggs i am going to right off the bat say you're an entp um based off of just the your innovative style and your uh your your big character no no (laughs) she's not she's not an i know no, no, I'm an, I took that. I'm an INTP. I'm a hermit. You're an I stay, I, I do not no. go out. Okay. No, you don't, don't understand. You don't understand. I never leave my house. Oh, I, under, I understand that personality <laughs> types are shockingly true for the most part. And so uh, you're, you're, you're very excited and I love it. Um, but, and also being an INTP, uh, you're gonna you're gonna look for the future. That's just I'm a futurist. If I was gonna I, classify, I, I'm a futurist, a surrealist, mostly a creator who spends a lot of time. I, I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna give you a preview of coming attractions. I've been working on something for days. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah. But with that being said, I do want to I want to allow you to open up to the possibility that not everybody's going to get excited about awesome stuff as you are um, all right you and i uh, <laughs> i for myself too i i do this in real life i am so excited about steam it it's yeah you know that passion that really brings people on board somebody somewhere uh they'll either be brought on by the passion or they'll just be like this person's just over crazy the top. they're just over the top <laughs> They're getting excited over nothing. It'll die out. And, you know, for, for, for you, this has been like two months, right? Two or no, three. more. June. Wait. I, I joined on June 8th. June, July. Two no, no. Three months. months. Two and a half months. Three. Almost three months right two now. Two and a half, yeah. Yeah. So we're, I mean, we're at the point where the people that you uh, got excited about uh, got excited with that didn't come over. Uh, you keep being excited like you are. They are gonna be. That they are. Awesome. They are hitting. They are kicking themselves right now. There was a guy in um, one of the Facebook groups that I mentioned. That I was really active in. I brought in a ton of people from that Facebook group. There was just a post yesterday, and he was like, "I'm kicking myself. I should have joined when you told me back in June, and I knew that would happen. But you I know what? Predict it." Yeah, it, but you know what? That's obvious to you. It's not obvious to anybody else. And mm-hmm. now, next time, they'll maybe pay attention to what you have to say about what you think is the next big thing. It's how you build your credibility and all that good stuff. It's but- funny because I did not know what was going to happen. Nobody but did. I spent, I spent two weeks studying like crazy like i didn't get any sleep you're probably how when did you join what Um, uh, a little bit of a about a month ago maybe okay because you're you're still in the oh my gosh the sleepless nights there was this whole trend (laughs) of seeing insomniacs i was like i want to get sleeping pills to there's a whole market of steam at newbies oh, that dude, are like sleep patterns. cannot yeah. sleep. It's like it's like it's so mind blowing once you get into I would say the third layer. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say the third layer? When you oh. get into Dan Larimer's blog, Bite Master. Mm-hmm. The blog. When you get into that world, you're like, Oh my god, this is like totally mind blowing. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah I, 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 not quite there yet but 
<laughs> so, so Leah, earlier you said uh, a lot of the, the content that you see these days is too short. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know how, uh, but some of that short content has done pretty well. Uh, I which mean, some, some short content has well, done in the well. early days, but not so much anymore. That's not what the curators are going for. Yeah. Because uh -huh. you are aware that the whales have now outsourced a lot of the curation efforts to other people. Did you know that? Uh, okay. I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to hear more about that. Definitely. I don't know how much I'm able to say, but I know that there is a dedicated group because honestly, a lot of us notice that, wow, there's too much content. There's not enough curation and there's a lot of piling on effects of the whales and stuff. So basically um, we all, I addressed this issue, came together as groups and just said, look, we need to find curators. So now a lot of that work, and it's, it's a job, like it's a real job, curating, finding new talent, because really that's the area that is, you know, they've addressed it now. There's a lot more dedicated curation going on than there was before. I would mm -hmm. say a month ago, it was really a bad problem. It's getting better, but it's still hard because the amount of stuff coming in is enormous. Yeah. It's enormous. I, I, read, I read that they were, um, they were setting up bots with different strategies and adding people to different lists to upvote everything they had, uh, everything they posted at a certain time within that first 30-minute window um, after. I don't. Yeah, that, that was going on, like, I'm not, people accuse me of being on bot lists. I'm not on bot lists that I'm aware of. I was at one time, and that's because my talent was noticed in the beginning when, like, there was no writers. There was very few writers, I should say. There was about five or six of us, and so we were kind of carrying a lot of the momentum, but now it's a different game. Um, I'm actually, um, kind of, you know, I'm not getting like the whale of votes and stuff, but what, I, what my strategy has always been is trying to fulfill needs of the system because I have fulfilled various roles. People only know me as like the prolific writer, but actually people don't know what I was doing before. Most of my time was not writing. It was, well, I would say it's 50, 50. 50% of my time in the very beginning was welcoming people and giving them support. And this is before the reputation system existed. Mm -hmm. I saw a great need in the beginning because comments were not even rewarded in any way. And I did the opposite. While everyone's trying to game the system, I was, I was going about my business, which was let's build a very strong community that is interactive, that gives a crap about other people. Because that's half of the equation. We all need money. But I tell you what, without honest people commenting and giving feedback, I think it would fail. Mm -hmm. I think it would, the whole thing. Because basically, we need, like every person needs feedback on what they're doing. It's a psychological thing. Definitely. Yeah, it's, and you know, so without and without something, it's called social fabric. Without social fabric, binding people together, discovering new friendships, and rewarding others. Like it, one thing I start doing when I start to feel empty, and everyone has a feeling of emptiness. Like, okay, I don't know what I'm going to write about today. And when I feel like I'm empty, I look for someone to give some recognition and or money and or support to and then i actually start feeling better about myself it's like a reverse thing that that it's selfish in origin because i'm feeling like crap <laughs> sometimes so basically it's just like hey i'm feeling like crap you know what is wrong with me it's because i'm being selfish and i'm also not i'm being ignorant about what's going on in the community of steam it or or life itself i'm i'm not listening i'm not learning i'm not being active i'm being inactive and so i break the inactivity 
and uh, feelings of worthlessness by going out in search of, I found steam cleaners that they were doing this amazing job and angst and cheetah. I don't, you know, I donated some money because I'm like, hey, they're doing a job that I don't want to do. I do not want to be a moderator. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm interested. I'm a creator mostly. Mm. So I thought, wow, there's people doing the job that I would not want to do. They deserve money. Like they need a, they need something from me. So that broke the spell of the other day. Mm. I think you're too hard on yourself, but I also, I think, right. you know, as an INTP, your secondary process is extroverted intuition, which primarily has to do with relating to other people. Yeah, so through a uh, computer, <laughs> I'll admit, through a computer, not in real life. But, I yeah. am. <laughs> but, but still, but anyway, this this has been a good segment. But let's jump to our next question, which is okay. how do you make awesome content? Uh, Leah is an expert in that, I think, uh, because she's right? very well on steamit.com. And two days ago, I got a comment on one of my posts uh, from a user who said, and I quote, but I'm not interesting nor capable of creating valuable content, sad face slash wrist. 